Welcome. NOAA has just issued the May 2019 Global Climate Report, and this video is a summary of that report. Here we have the globally average temperatures for various regions. Globally, May was the fourth warmest May on record, with its average temperature being 0.85 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average. The land was the eighth warmest, and the ocean the second warmest. The northern hemisphere was the fifth warmest, and the southern hemisphere the second warmest. So that makes it 412 consecutive months with temperatures above the 20th century average. That's over 34 years. So let's take a look at the map and see where these temperatures were distributed across the globe to make May the fourth warmest May on record. And that, by the way, was 0 0.04 degrees centigrade uh, warmer than May of 2018. As you can see, we have a couple of really cold areas, the continental United States and also Central Europe. There were equally some warm areas like northern Alaska, northern Canada and eastern Russia and Siberia. But the question here is, did any of these set records? And to do that, we must look at the percentiles map. This is the percentiles map. What they've done here is they divided the temperature range into five equal groups, going from much cooler than average to much warmer than average, uh, and ranging in color from blue through white to red. Now they've reserved dark blue for record coldest pixels, and you'll see there are no such pixels on this map. And record warm uh, as dark red pixels, and there are 98 of those on the map. So that would indicate that we still have a strongly warming world. Now let's take a look at the single station daily records uh, around the globe. In May, there's a basically a statistical tie between the number of record highs and record lows. So that doesn't tell us very much. However, year to date, the story is very different. We have far more record highs than we have record lows in a ratio of 1.3 to 1. So that too indicates we still have a warming world. Here I have the rankings of each month for the last six years. And I've, you can see I've got May 2019 here as ranked a fourth warmest. You can compare each year with the previous years to date and you can see that 2019 is already outperforming 2014 and 2018, and it's tied with 2017. That means that 2019 is heading towards becoming the third or fourth warmest year on record. Well, let's take a look at the upper atmosphere. And this month we have remarkable agreement between the University of Alabama uh, Huntsville and remote sensing systems. They both find that the lower and mid troposphere was the fifth warmest May on record, and they have a warming rate of 0.14 and 0.17 degrees centigrade per decade, which is remarkably similar to what the surface temperatures are warming. Now the stratosphere is cooling, and they both find it's the third coolest May on record, and that the uh, trend is minus 0.41 degrees centigrade per decade. Now, the fact that the troposphere is warming and the stratosphere is cooling is a unique signature that this is being caused by greenhouse gases. No other natural or anthropogenic mechanism produces this pattern. That shows that the increasing greenhouse gases in our atmosphere are having an effect on our global temperatures. Now let's take a look at the Northern Hemisphere sea ice extent for May 2019. It was the second lowest May extent on record and a continuous slide over the last 40 years representing uh, by this red arrow here and we've had 18 consecutive years with the amount of sea ice below average. In the southern hemisphere we have a similar story but the overall trend is less clear. In May of 2019 was the record lowest uh, sea ice extent over the last 40 years and represents the fourth consecutive year with below average sea ice extent. Now this is a very sad picture. This is some sled dogs in Greenland trying to pull a sled across uh, an ice field, but the ice is melting so quickly they're having to wade through ankle deep water. So what is going on with El Nino? Well, you can see it, we are still in El Nino conditions, i.e. above plus 0.5 on this chart. But the models are beginning to show that El Nino is declining and probably in the next few months we will enter ENSO neutral conditions. 
and possibly sometime next year slip into a La Nina. Let's take a look at what's been going on in the United States. First, temperature. It was the 37th coldest May on record, and you can see why. There's a swath of cold temperatures all the way from California up into the northeast. Meanwhile, in the northwest, it's been warmer than average, and certainly down in the southeast and along the eastern seaboard, there have been temperatures way above normal. What's the reason for this? Well, you can get an uh, indication from the uh, precipitation map, which is shown here. You can see we've had abnormal amounts of rain from California through that same area, whereas it has been dry in the northwest and in the southeast. So when you get all this rain, it tends to be more cloudy. More cloudy means you get less sunshine and the temperatures drop. This, by the way, was the second wettest May on record. So let's summarize what we've had. In the Arctic, the area of sea ice was the second smallest on record. In the Antarctic, it was the smallest on record. Alaska has its sixth warmest May since the records began. We've had a large number of tornadoes break out during May. Hawaii had uh, its highest May temperature departure on record. South America as a whole uh, had its third highest uh, temperature. Europe was a mixed bag with some areas being warmer than average and some being cooler. Overall, it was the coolest May since 2004. In the Middle East, uh, Israel uh, experienced record breaking heat. In South Africa was the second warmest May on record. Asia was the eighth warmest May on record. Japan set a new maximum national temperature. Australia is suffering from drought with Western Australia having 83% below normal rainfall for the month. And New Zealand had its third warmest May on record. And El Nino is weakening in the Eastern Pacific. So uh, we could expect a change in the overall climate pattern in the next few months. So until next time, goodbye.